You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, hello and good morning. As you can see, I'm the only one here because uh, Mr. Beaver is having major computer issues this morning. He's unable to get audio. He could hear me, but we couldn't get any sound out of his system. So we'll take care of it later. I'll be able to fix it later on. Can't get to it right at this moment because time is running very short and I have to get into the office shortly. But uh, I'll I'll, uh, have an online session with him later today. I'll take over. I'll figure it out and fix it. I do. I'm an audio guy. I work in IT. I take care of stuff like this on a daily basis. So, no panic. It'll be okay. Sort of. If the entire banking system in the world doesn't collapse. (laughs) Which it very much may just do because this little graphic from Credit Suisse shows that it has plunged to an all-time low. It's down 96.7% from its all-time high. You can see the last time it was anywhere near this low was, well, recently actually, but it just keeps going worse and worse and worse. And it looks like the entire banking system is going to collapse around the world. Except, of course, maybe here in Canada where our heavily regulated gatekeepers have kept us in check for a number of years. It's how we weathered the storm in 2008. So gatekeepers are a good thing, aren't they? You see, the reason the banking system in the United States of America is crashing is because they removed regulations that would prevent something like this from occurring. Didn't learn a goddamn thing from 2008, did you, you greedy bastards? Thanks! See, here's what'll happen. They will um, uh, privatize the profits and socialize the losses. We're going to be paying for it. Simple as that. We're going to have to pay for it. And it really sucks. What? The rich get rich, the poor get poor, and they'll continue to punch down on us. Apparently, apparently the bailout that they're getting in the United States of America is not coming from the taxpayer. It's coming from a fund that was set up that all banks pay into to prevent something like this. Well, not prevent something like this from happening, but fix something like this from happening. Looks like we have um, Mr. Beavers trying to jump in, and he's on his laptop. Hey, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, a little yeah, tired, a... but I can. Yeah, I can hear you. You got your All headphones right. on. That's good. Welcome to the party. 
Uh, we'll we'll fix your other computer later today. It happens. Hey, I'm the growly grizzly. No, you're what? the beaver. We'll fix it. I'm, later. Don't worry. That, it's not the end of the world. Nothing. 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 Make. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You're, you're cutting out real bad there. Yeah, you're, you're cutting out horribly bad. Well, the question, Chocostead, are the banks going to collapse? It's uh, a very good question. It's an extreme possibility. Um, I think we're going to be okay here in Canada for the rest of the world. I can't say. It's not looking good, though, and um, I'm not trying to be a... a, a bringing you bad news, but it is bad news. And that's just simply how it is. There's nothing, nothing I can say or do to make it different. Um, they're in, they're in bad shape. They're in really bad shape right now. And it could very well lead to a, a global, uh, financial catastrophe uh, from an article in the daily mail. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> daily mail is not exactly known to be the most truthful of publications, but uh, according to this uh, article, uh, which was updated at 7.30 uh, this morning, or I guess 7.30, no, yesterday, a uh, Wall Street expert who foretold the Lehman Brothers collapse in 2008 predicts credit, credit Swiss to be the next major bank failure and warns of serious, of serious trouble for U.S. bond market askers after the Silicon Valley bank collapse. So yeah, we are on the verge of a bank collapse. It looks like, um, how, how bad, how big eh, could be a global catastrophe from a financial standpoint. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Um, uh, I, I would suggest if you have, um, investments with European holding companies of any type, you might want to look into it. Uh, I don't know if I would tell you to cash out because I'm not a financial wizard. Obviously, I'm paycheck to paycheck, so <laughs> don't 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 take anything that I say to the bank, pun intended. But it's um yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's just it's not it's not looking good. And in other news, <sighs> yeah, I guess it's a bad news Wednesday. Um. Canada's chief science officer, let me just take this graphic down. Canada's chief science officer uh, released a report on long COVID claiming it could trigger a mass disabling event with the potential to ravage healthcare and labor markets. Oh boy, that's not good. Driving the news, the new report raises several red flags about the long-term health implications of long COVID for Canada. It also deals an 18-step framework for managing the disease, including creating a nationwide research and clinical care network. Following a report, the federal government committed $29 million for research into long COVID and the de development of clinical guidelines. Long COVID is described as devastating for those it affects because it can cause a wide range of symptoms for an indefinite time. A new University of Waterloo study has even linked COVID infections to reduce oxygen flow to the brain, causing long-term issues. Um, I know a couple of people that are suffering from long COVID, and they said their lives have been irrevocably damaged. A um, couple of friends that I've talked to have said, yeah, I my brain fog is a real thing. Um, I, I, I'll be sitting there having a conversation and all of a sudden my volume goes way up and I don't realize it. So I'm, I'm sort of losing touch with reality to a certain degree. I'm tired all the time and I can't remember a damn thing. I'm like, oh, great, wonderful. Now we might have millions of people affected by this. According to this, over 1.4 million Canadians have reportedly experienced COVID symptoms three months uh, or more after their initial uh, infections, roughly 15% of infected adults. While most have recovered, others have had to greatly reduce their workloads or quit their jobs. While analysis of long COVID's socioeconomic impact in Canada is scarce, analysis from other countries indicates significant impacts on the labor market and gross domestic product. 
Bottom line is this. Medical professionals still don't have a clear consensus on how to define or diagnose long COVID, but we do know long-term disability claims citing it are on the rise, as is a spike in claims for COVID-related sickness like diabetes and mental illness. So I really am curious to see what's going to happen in here, here in the province of Ontario, or any province run by a conservative government who, uh, and, and I'm not just going to hold Doug Ford's government responsible for this, because unlike the previous several governments in the province of Ontario, his government actually did increase ODSP funding. Now, they did it by $50 a month, but they did increase it. So I, they didn't cut. They, they actually did put money in. It's money that won't make a bloody bit of difference because the cost of living just keeps going up. And ODSP payments have been stalled since 1993 or four or something like that. I could be, might be 97. Either way, successive uh, conservative and liberal governments have not increased payments. They stalled them, they sat on them, and they watched people die. Makes me beg the question, what are they going to do now? as we could have millions of Canadians suddenly incapable of working. What's going to happen to them if people start burning through their retirement savings, those, those amongst us who have them, then what? Do they lose their homes? Do they go into abject poverty and die in the streets? Do they opt out for MAID? I'm just giving you a million possible scenarios here, and I don't know. The sky is falling? Yeah, I'm not being chicken little on this one. It, it, it really is a case of the sky is falling, and I don't have the answers. I do have a million and one questions. A UBI would make a tremendous difference right now, and if we don't institute something soon, we're going to see a, a collapse in the labor markets. Because if people can't work and we don't have adequate funds for them, what do we do then? It's all very troubling. And as I said, I don't, I don't have any solutions. I have a million and one questions and, and I'm going to be discussing some of them in a, a letter I'm going to be sending to my MP and my MPP to figure out what they're going to do about this catastrophic problem that is knocking on our doorsteps or standing on our doorsteps and knocking on our door. I mean, to be specific, we're fucked. I know that's vulgar and I know people don't like to hear it, but the truth is often ugly. And in this case, it really is ugly. We're going to have major problems in the very near future if we don't get something in place or in play to fix this situation. So we need to talk to our MPPs and our MPs or our MLAs, depending upon which province you live in. You need to confront them with the fact that if we don't get a UBI in place soon, millions more people are going to be unable to work. Well, suddenly, well, they'll run out of EI and then they'll run out of disability benefits that whatever they have. Now, I have a minor long-term disability benefit through my company, but it's I, I, I would need every other benefit available to me just to maintain a roof over my head. So what's going to happen? I don't know, but it is always darkest before the dawn as the saying goes. And I don't know if the dawn is on the horizon because it's getting darker by the minute. In other news, vaccines work. I've got a graphic on the screen here for those folks who are listening, and it talks about pre-vaccine era estimated annual morbidity in the United States of America, percentage decrease. So prior to the vaccine for diphtheria, uh, 21,635 people died annually. Uh, Since the diphtheria vaccine has been introduced, uh, nobody has. Nobody's died from diphtheria. Prior to the H influenza uh, influenza virus, it had, um, well, it's been a 99% decrease from 20,999, or is that 900, I can't quite read that, it's too small, (laughs) 20,000, sorry, 20,000 even, has been reduced down to 243. Hepatitis A from a morbidity rate of 117,333 is down to 11,000. 
91% reduction. Hepatitis B, 83% reduction. Measles, 99% reduction. Mumps, 99% reduction. Pertussis, 93% reduction. Pneumococcal disease, 74% reduction. Polio, 100% reduction. Rubella, 99%. Congenital rubella, 99%. Smallpox, 100%. Smallpox, by the way, has been globally eradicated. Tetanus is down 98%. And varicella, which I'm not quite sure what that is, but the death rate prior to the vaccine for varicella was 4,085,120 annually. It's been cut down by 89% to 449,363. What does all that mean? It means get your vaccines. They work. And they don't cause autism, Jenny McCarthy. They never have. You were misguided. I don't want to get on a rant. I'd like to bring you some good news today. I'd like to. I really can't. I don't, I don't have any. It's all bad. It's all terrible. But I can bring you a message from one of our title sponsors. Um, Eleganza. Oh, look at this. Look at this. The hound's tooth high-waisted bell-bottom pants with the hang glide collar and the bell-bottom sleeves. Who? Why? When? Eleganza for your worst fashion faux pas in history. All the way from Boston, Massachusetts. Or Massachusetts, if some people pronounce it. Or Boston, Mass. You decide how you want to chalk that name up. I can't, I can't tell you how to think, and I won't. I can tell you that you shouldn't vote for the conservatives because this new social conservative movement of removing gatekeepers seems to bring us nothing but doom and gloom, train derailments, bank crashes, all in the name of greed. When the profits and loss column starts to show the losses higher than the profits because accident after accident or bank crash after bank crash maybe maybe having gatekeepers in place is not a terrible idea talking to you mr poliver that's right skippy we're on the cusp of a global economic collapse because the former guy donald trump removed the, the Glass-Dodd regulation that would have prevented Silicon Valley Bank from crashing. But the greedy pricks in charge didn't care. See what it gets you? Greed is not good. It has never been good, and it will kill people. But you don't care because they're poor people, right? It's time for us poors to punch up, because I'm pretty tired of getting punched down on. All right. I'm going to have to jump because I got to get to the office and I'll try and wind this up as quickly as possible. What is going on with my camera? The image seems to be all off. I don't know. Let's see here. Let's just take a, an adjustment. Make an adjustment. No, oh, it seems to be, it looks like it's smoky in here. <laughs> Trust me when I say this, it isn't. I don't know what's going on. Let's just take that down, bring that back. Uh, how about this? What about this? Oh, that doesn't look any better. I don't know what's going on. You know what? I will um, try something here. That doesn't seem to be working either. Well, it's just one of those days. We've all got the gremlins in the system, and, well, sometimes that's just how it goes. So happy Wednesday, or happy hump day, or welcome to Worldwide Bank Crash Wednesday. You kids take care. I'm going to jump. Uh, I want to thank our title sponsors, of course, um, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corford Moon Publishing, uh, CanadianTarot.com, and The Pepper Master. Also, you can find us on all fine places where you get your fine podcasts, and especially right here in the Cryer Media Network. We do appreciate you tuning in every day, even on days when things go sideways for us. We appreciate your audience. We appreciate your input. And we do love each and every one of you in our own special way.
We'll get it fixed up for tomorrow, I promise you. We'll have a good show, and Friday we'll have a long show to make up for losses today, of course. Until I see you again, my friends, uh, please do be kind to and gentle with yourselves, as Mr. Beaver always says. That includes you too, Mr. Beaver. The computer problems are just simple problems. Deep breaths. Remember, you can always tune into my ASMR YouTube channel, where I'll talk you down. Take care. See you soon. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver Podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. I don't know why the music sped up there at the end. That's very strange. Hey, remember, this Saturday, March 18th, post-St. Patrick's Day, you can nurse your hangover if you so have one. Tune in to us on our live pubcast. Welcome to the place where everyone knows your name, where everyone's your friend, where good times are had by all. Sit back, relax, pour yourself a beverage and enjoy our company. I know we'll certainly enjoy yours. Welcome to the True North Eager Beaver Pubcast. Once a month, we gather at the Lieutenant's Pump at 361 Elgin Street in downtown Ottawa, Canada's capital city, bringing you joy and happiness all day long. See you soon.